Hello, everyone. Chase Coin, that implies that I'm very wealthy, Hank, so I will take that compliment. My I first name the, is Chase, like the banks. So. Yes, and I have the card. Yeah, and by the way, have you guys seen the Tetris movie on Apple TV Plus? If not, highly recommend. It's an excellent movie. Um, so, Hank, excited to talk to you today about your work with Blue Planet Alliance. Uh, for folks who aren't familiar, give us, first of all, the mission. Um, so the vision is uh, to create a world uh, in which humanity and nature live in harmony. And the, the mission is to end the use of carbon-based fuel. And so it's getting us to a, a wind and solar world that every country, our planet, is powered by those renewable resources. Wind, solar, geothermal, wave, I don't care what it is, as long as it doesn't inc involve carbon. Um, a little bit on the fence about uh, nuclear, but uh, yeah, we've got plenty of alternatives. And would you say that one of your most recent or more notable accomplishments has maybe been what's happened recently with the state of Hawaii? I, that is, in fact, my claim to fame. I, you know, I um, had a near-death experience, uh, found my mission, my first mission to end the use of carbon-based fuel, and I decided Hawaii should be first uh, because I was living there. And we were the first state in the country to have a mandate of 100% renewable energy. We passed that law in 2015. Since then, 13 other states have copied our legislation, including California, Illinois, and New York. Which is a big deal. Which is the big deal. And I mean, we'll come back to Hawaii, but I feel like we can't gloss over this. Uh, you, you helped bring Tetris to the world. You had a near-death experience, and now you're in this work. Help, help us fill in some of those blanks of how you got from one to the next. What, what happened? Um, so I sold a company in 2005. A month later, I find myself in the back of an ambulance with 100% blockage of the Widowmaker. That is the largest artery in your heart. 95% of the people who have that happen to them die. So I'm, I'm the lucky 5%. In that ambulance, well, the first thing I said is, you've got to be kidding me. I haven't spent any of the money yet. <laughs> <laughs> but the second thing I said is, no, I'm not going. I still have stuff to do and uh, found my mission in the recovery room in the back of the newspaper. It said, oh, article in the newspaper, Hawaii. Oh, by the way, we're gonna kill all the coral in the world by the end of the century. Ocean acidification, carbon dioxide caused by us. And you know, the coral is what we can see. And we can measure, we can see the coral disappearing. But I mean, all of the plankton that, re that, still, that are not gonna survive that, it basically we're talking about collapsing the entire food chain of the ocean. And if we think that that's an okay thing for us to do, we're, uh, we've got another thing coming. I mean, plank plankton and, and algae also play an important role in the carbon cycle. So there's, there's, a, lot of, oh, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. Uh, I mean, basically we're ending life in the ocean, which makes no sense at all. And our oceans have absorbed, I think it's close to 90% of the heat that humans have put into the, into the, into the atmosphere, into our, our cycle uh, from burning coal, oil, and gas, where oceans have done a lot of the hard work in protecting us but they're certainly running out of capacity. Including absorbing the carbon dioxide. And that's what the ocean acidification is all about. That carbon dioxide being absorbed into the ocean, uh, you know, th that through of the calculation, we should have been hotter before, but the ocean has been absorbing all that carbon dioxide all the way along. So um, we've got to get it back and we've got to, we've got to fix it. So coming back to your work and your accomplishments uh, with the state of Hawaii, uh, getting any place to 100% renewables involves some challenges. It can be utility companies, it can be fossil fuel interests. How did you overcome some of those hurdles? Well, I mean, so when, you, when I first talked to the utility, they, they basically, their attitude is, what are you talking about? You know, uh, we, this is, well, our job is to make electricity 24 seven. That's what the people want and this is what we give them. Give them. Um, and so for them to change, it's a hard thing. And I understand that all the engineers there know how to make electricity using oil or coal. Hawaii used to spend $2 billion a year on coal, um, on, on oil and a billion dollars on coal, that's $3 billion. Um, since then we changed the business model of the utility so they make more money by switching to renewables. And if you give them the monetary incentive. Now it's not only the, the management, they're gonna make more money, but the shareholders, they're gonna make more money. So when you align everybody, all the stakeholders, so we're aligning the, the shareholders, the, uh, uh, everybody in the utility with the people who are gonna pay less because the utility pays 25 cents per kilowatt hour for oil and wind and solar come in at eight cents. And if you add Storage is up to 12 cents, it's half the cost. Their old business model was 10% on the price of oil, which is two and a half cents. 
And now we say, well, you can make more money. So maybe now, now they make three cents. That is a significant increase in their bottom line. And it is a significant decrease uh, you know, uh, on the rate pay. We did an off the cuff uh, calculation. If they do what they say, which is, by the way, they, they, after saying we can't, and we passed the mandate, they finally came out and publicly said, yes, we can, we can do it, and we can do it by 2040. That would save ratepayers around $7 billion. And every island is like that in the world because they're all importing diesel or LNG or whatever, and they, they have no energy security, uh, and the equipment is, you know, has to be fixed by people that come from other places. So it's a constant uh, battle for them. The, the sun and the wind are not sending us a bill for the energy. So if we have utility companies being able to lower their rates and make more money, we're paying less for energy. Why are we not doing this everywhere more quickly? <laughs> well, I would say that it's mostly ignorance. It's, it's people in the utilities not knowing how to make the transition. And when we forced the issue by passing the mandate, their engineers had to think about it and they had to think about how we're gonna do this. And that's when they came up and they said, yeah, actually we figured it out. We can do this by 2040. Actually, they can do it much faster. Um, we are today, we're at 36% renewable energy in Hawaii, 36%. And so, and we stopped coal last year, the last coal fire power plant went down. We passed another law, making sure that it's never gonna happen again. No coal will ever be burned for making electricity in Hawaii ever again. Yeah, please, that, that certainly deserves applause. And so part of the mission, I imagine, is taking that to other states, uh, certainly other countries. Uh, what's sort of the status report? Where are you at with, that, with those efforts? So um, <clears throat> originally, the idea was to, to start in Hawaii and bring it to the other states, and, but it organically moved to the other states. And, th and that's very nice. So I call that the domino effect. Uh, state after state is having that mandate. Uh, but then, you know, in our, in our wildest success, say we do 100% of, of the United States, we're only 4 point something percent of the people in the world. So in order for us to fix climate change, we have to fix everybody. So, uh, so we decided that we need to do this on an international level and starting with islands. So what we've been doing is we've been bringing island countries or islands and island countries to Hawaii, show them what we did and teach them how to work together and then send them back. So, um, Thus far, we did uh, the f last October, we did Palau, Tonga, Tuvalu, uh, Micronesia, American Samoa, Guam, uh, Northern Marianas, and the Cayman Islands. And this past May, we did uh, Fiji, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea, S uh, Seychelles, Jamaica, Dominica, uh, Dominica, Grenada, gosh, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda. <laughs> I remember all. I mean, yeah, that also deserves some applause. <laughs> And when we do this, we bring four, four people from each country, somebody from the government, someone from the utility, someone from the regulatory agency, and someone from the community. And basically these are people that generally don't talk to each other uh, or, they, or they actually fight each other. And we must just show them, we, we, uh, we have the, the people who talk to them are the governor of the time, the, the heads of the utility, renewable energy companies, the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission people, uh, the renewable energy uh, environmentalists, that's us. Um, so they get exposed and then they, they ask all kinds of questions. And I've, I've been in the room and I, I can see they have no idea how to go about doing this. And that's what's stopping them. They just don't have the, the knowledge, they don't have, so, Basically, two days, they, they get all the information, ask all the questions. One day, we drive them around the island in an electric bus to show them all the renewable energy projects on Oahu. Then two days, we teach them how to work together. And that's a, that's a, a, a new thing for many of them. So that five day, after that five days, they go back, and we have people on the ground in Hawaii. If they have any questions or follow up, then we, we have those people in place. So it's really just a matter of them saying, they come in there not knowing how to do this, and then they probably leave thinking or saying to you, gosh, this is simple, we can do this. Yeah, we can do this. It doesn't even require money, by the way. <laughs> the, the, the utility didn't spend money. All they did was put up RFPs, request for proposal, and uh, renewable energy companies 
came in and said, well, we'll sell you this for, you know, this wind for eight cents or this solar project. And it was a competition to see who could like do those projects. And there are so many project people who can do projects. But the problem is if you go to an island and you try to do a project and then you kind of talk to the government and then uh, you, you get to the first base, second base, and all of a sudden the government changes. And now you've got a new government and said, no, 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 we're not doing that. Well, we're going to start the process from scratch. And so um, basically the developers lose confidence in trying to do business in those islands. So, so what has to happen first is the island needs to make the decision that they're going to go 100%. And the people need to get behind it. So our project, our, uh, our system is called Gale. We, we do the groundwork to figure out who's most likely to succeed. Uh, we sign agreements with the head of state. We've done nine of those thus far. Then we do legislation. That's impor important, but like we did in Hawaii. Once it becomes a law, it means the people want it. And then it's really hard for, a, for another administration to backtrack because they, everybody can see, oh, it's getting cheaper and it's solving climate change and so on. And then, uh, then it's execution. I'm actually here um, for the execution part because I see developers in the audience or, or at this conference who will come in and do the work uh, of doing the, the, the projects afterwards. And, and to honor the title of this session, it's how the climate crisis will end. And I think some people, maybe if, even if we don't admit it, in the back of our minds, we're like, oh, well, it's, this is not going to end well. Is that true? Uh, no, it is. This, <laughs> this we, the way this ends is that we decide that it ends. That's, that's, that's it. We just make the decision. Um, and, and by the way, we have to make a decision about the deadline. Because if you, if you don't have a deadline, nothing happens. It's not like, oh, I'm going to build you a bridge. Well, I'm not actually sure when it's going to be done. Maybe someday. No, that doesn't work. It's going to be done something by some date. I picked the date of 2045. It was given to me by the uh, legislature in Hawaii because we want a 2040, they want a 2050, and we settled for 2045. 2045 is the 100th anniversary of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Let's fix climate by 2045. It's just a decision. It's just a decision. We just have to make up our minds. Uh, people ask me if I have hope, and the answer is uh, no, I don't have hope. I have determination because we're doing this. This isn't like, like are we going to do this or no? No, we are definitely doing this. And, and, and the more people that understand that we're doing this, the quicker the transition will be and the cheaper it will be and the more of nature we will save. That collective, it sounds like you're speaking to that like collective power of maybe we want to call it manifestation, but it's just that collective decision, right? The determination. Yeah. It, because we have, we were talking about this earlier, we have all the tools we need. We don't need new breakthroughs. We have all the money. We have all the technology. All we're lacking is willpower. That's, that's, that's it. And, you know, for the people who don't believe in climate change, okay, please just get out of the way. We'll, we'll take care of it. There's enough of us. That, that understand the problem, that have access to capital, that have access to technology, that we can totally fix this. This is not a question in my, in my mind. Uh, slide being showed earlier is showing us doubling of, of solar. Are you kidding me? I just came from, Green, from uh, sorry, Iceland and, and saw the geothermal there. Boundless energy. The, 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 the core of this planet is molten. And it's been four and a half billion years that it's been trying to leak this through volcanic activity. And it's, there's no end in sight. And we just need to drill a little deeper. It's everywhere. So I, I you know, like the oil industry has figured out how to drill under in, 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 insane conditions, under two miles of water, and then they drill down. Are you kidding me? It sounds like you're saying, what if we put the fossil fuel industry to work doing a different kind of drilling? I, you know, the fossil fuel industry is the energy industry. I don't, I'm not, I'm not fighting the, the, I don't call them the fossil fuel, I call them the energy industry. They're eventually going to be the solution because they, they have the capital, they know how to do that drilling, they know, how, they, they know how to make energy. They just have to get it from someplace else, that's all. And, and Hank, I know we are running out of time. I hope you are all feeling as inspired as I am. Um, because first we were talking backstage and he's like, this isn't about hope. And I'm like, oh gosh, okay, we're not. 
<sighs> All right, well, that's gonna be a conversation. <clears throat> but I, I mean, I hope you're feeling like the, the enthusiasm and the energy um, from all of the effort and just your determination to do this. So as we wrap up here, what would you encourage people to, maybe it's an action or maybe it's just a mindset. What do you want us to walk it's, away from? First of all, it's a, mind, a mindset. We need to all have the confidence that, it, that we are gonna fix this. We that's will. What, that we will fix, that we are fixing this. That's, that's the first thing. And then if there is something that you can do, do that. I don't care what it is, um, you know, turn off the light switch in a room where there's no people. I mean, it's, it's small things, but do them and teach your children how to do them. Actually, I think it's our children that are going to teach us how to do these things. <laughs> <laughs> so just backwards. But and anyway. then can I just make one addition to that? And then talk about it. Like whatever change you make, don't be afraid to talk about it. The climate deniers and the dismissives are actually a small part of the United States. They're just loud. So don't let that loud minority deter you from talking about the amazing things that you're doing, the amazing things that you and your organization are doing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Hank. Thank you. What an inspiring conversation. Thank you, everyone.